Hello and welcome to season five of the LuxCast, where we explore the intersections of Christian faith, culture, and our lives. My name is Megan Rice, Communications Coordinator at Western Theological Seminary. The theme of this season is public theology, as we engage in dialogue about topics that affect both the church and society. Today's guest is former Grand Rapids Mayor, Reverend George Hartwell. George is a 1988 graduate of Western Theological Seminary, who for 14 years led Heartside Ministries in Grand Rapids, working with and advocating for the city's most disadvantaged residents. He also served two terms as city commissioner from 1992 to 1999, before being elected mayor in 2003. Reverend Hartwell was Grand Rapids' longest serving mayor, serving until 2016 and focusing on issues like sustainability, social justice, and community development. Glenn Sweer, Associate Director of Formation for Ministry and a longtime colleague of George, sat down to talk with him. Uh, George, welcome to Western Seminary. Thanks, thanks, Glenn. Um, it's been uh, quite a few years since I've uh, walked these hallowed halls. And you are the Reverend George Hartwell, graduate of this place in the late 80s. Um, that's a long time right, ago. Right, uh, 80, uh, 87 was my graduation year. I, uh, I, I came here from a first career in, in uh, business, uh, in mortgage banking, and uh, feeling called to ministry. And, and Western was, uh, was the place that uh, gave me the grounding that I, that I needed and the, and the knowledge that I needed and the passion that, that was already smoldering in me to, uh, to, to do ministry among the, the, the poorest of our community. Well, this Lux Gas series is about public theology, so I want to ask you about when your then second career ministry life started intersecting with public life and political life. How did that happen? Well, sure. It was, um, uh, in, in fact, uh, because you and I worked so closely together during those years, you were, uh, you were front and center for uh, much of that in, in, uh, in, in your work with the poor in Grand Rapids. But I found myself uh, as, a, as a pastor at Heartside Ministry um, I found myself frequently before the Grand Rapids uh, City Commission, our elected body in mm -hmm. Grand Rapids, uh, advocating for uh, services and housing funding for the, the homeless poor of, of Grand Rapids, uh, and, and, and not satisfied with the responses that I was getting from, mm -hmm. from uh, the mayor and, and the uh, commission. I, I ran for city commission in the third ward, the southeast side of Grand Rapids, and was uh, elected and, and, uh, and then re-elected, served two terms uh, uh, on, the, on the city commission. You know, discovered that it's never as easy as you think it's going mm -hmm. uh, to be to, to do the right thing. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the challenge when I got into office was that suddenly my constituency was much broader than you know, than the uh, several thousand homeless people who lived in the Heartside neighborhood. It was, uh, it was the entirety of the third ward of Grand Rapids and it's 68,000 people uh, whose circumstances and whose uh, um, uh, economic status and, and living conditions varied broadly. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the challenge for me then was how to bring the passion that I had to serve the disadvantaged uh, into an office where I had a responsibility for um, doing well by or doing good for a larger uh, constituency. So you were elected mayor in 2002, right? I served two terms on the city commission from, the, uh, from 1992 through the end of, uh, of the, the decade and then took four years off, uh, was elected in 2003, actually, oh, okay. and began serving in 2004, and served 12 years. Yeah. During that time, and even now, as you think back, you've been out of office a couple years. Three years now. Uh -huh. Did you see yourself, do you see yourself as either um, or both a politician and or a public theologian? <laughs> You know that's a that's a great way to phrase that question, Glenn. And I I I, I think in in the dichotomy is a uh, a, a failing a, a breach somehow. Mm -hmm. The the two ought not be separated. So I was a I was an elected official 
uh, for a total of 20 years, uh, mm -hmm. eight as a city commissioner, uh, uh, 12 as, as a mayor. But I was, I was never not a theologian. Uh, theologian sounds a little too heavy. Mm -hmm. I, 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 we, I never, we use the term pastor theologian. Pastor right? theologian. I never left that behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, the, so one of the challenges, I think, for the Christian in public office is how to bring uh, your, your, um, your, your, your faith, the ethics that, uh, uh, that, that, you've, that you've learned um, uh, uh, through the writings, uh, through the Gospels. Uh, uh, how do you bring that to service in a public environment where you have, you're representing people of mm. multiple faiths and of no faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I'm afraid that too often I see uh, an abusive use of, of faith that tries to um, diminish the other as being somehow um, lesser right. or tries right. to uh, enforce a uh, one's own faith perspective on the community. So I always, I always felt like I needed to um, uh, live out the my 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 faith tradition and my faith values without wearing my Christian faith on my mm -hmm. coat sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that that's 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 the challenge I think for an elected official. But mm -hmm. uh, to dichotomize and say. You know, there's the there's the elected official, and there's the and there's the pastor theologian. Mm -hmm. I, I think is a false dichotomy somehow. Okay, so in this space, Eugene Peterson spoke several years ago, and I remember him saying, "All preachers have one sermon they preach. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's for 40 years, but they preach the same sermon in different ways. Um, if that's true, and you." are comfortable enough with the term public theologian when you served as mayor. What was your one sermon? Um, what were the themes of that one sermon that squeezed out? You know, it, you, maybe you weren't preaching. It wasn't a bully pulpit, but you were preaching uh, yeah, through yeah, yeah. values. And, yeah. uh, you, 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 Glenn, you might expect that if you look back over my my history as a as a, 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 a pastor, uh, public theologian, a pu public theologian, is that what we're calling it? Yeah. Okay. You might expect that I that I look to the twenty um, fifth uh, chapter of Matthew and and uh, um, mm. uh, what you, you what you've done uh, to the least of these uh, you've done unto me, uh, and and that certainly has been. A motivating scripture for me, but 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 I'll tell you what the scripture that has been most powerful in my life comes from uh, the Gospel of Luke and appears only the story uh, appears only in Luke and I think it's the 14th chapter where Jesus uh, um, uh, meets ten lepers on on the road uh, as he's outside of Jerusalem and they 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 plead for healing and. We already know in the gospel narrative that, uh, that Jesus can, because he has, uh, heal with a touch, uh, heal with mm -hmm. a word. Mm -hmm. um, instead, he says to these ten lepers, go and show yourselves to the priest. In other words, make a, 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 a difficult and probably painful, both physically and, and emotionally painful, uh, um, uh, trip from where you are outside of Jerusalem into the the temple and show yourself to the priests and go through the the rites of uh, of purification yeah. um, and then the twist the wonderful twist in that story is um, that uh, Luke says and as they went they were healed as they went they were healed for me the sermon that that has shaped my life is the sermon that's that goes like um, uh, we have to step out in faith, no matter, no matter what the obstacles, no matter what the fears, no matter the, the, the fact that, 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 that the end isn't clear. If we step out in faith, if we act in faith, um, um, as we go, we are healed. As we go, we go with the Lord, and the Lord walks with us and, and, and provides the way and, and creates uh, the, the healing and the change in, the, in our lives. Um, you know me well enough over the decades that we've uh, uh, known each other 
to know how many changes and transformations mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. gone through in my life. And, and those were, there were some scary ones uh, for me and for uh, my wife Susan and our, and our kids as I went through major career changes uh, without real clarity on where, where I was going. Um, and yet we always did it in the, in, with the belief and in the faith that, that God walks with us mm-hmm. and, and shows a way. So I think that's how I'd answer your question. Yeah, okay. Well, how does that sermon then translate into public policy making? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, put, it, it certainly put me in the place uh, or allowed me to go to the place where I couldn't have imagined I would have gone, that is running for elected office. Uh, especially when I was walking the halls here at uh, Western Theological Seminary and preparing myself for ministry, I I could never have imagined at that point that it would have included serving as the the mayor of Grand Rapids Mm -hmm. or that it would have taken me to the places um, um, that I've been able to go uh, globally with uh, in in my work as as Mm -hmm. mayor. And yet, because I could have enough faith to step out uh, along the way, it's, I, I think this wonder, wonderful, varied, and uh, interesting life has, uh, has been able to show itself. So how does that work in public policy? Well, I found, as I said, I found myself uh, advocating for the homeless poor. Uh, I then ran for office and, and began serving in local office. And, and notwithstanding what I said previously, there, there, there are opportunities to work for the disadvantaged in the community in so many ways, whether that was around uh, uh, immigrant issues and immigrant rights, whether it was uh, 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 LGBT uh, rights, uh, um, or, or, or whether it was working on issues of poverty in the community and, 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 and trying to help lift up those that uh, were, were struggling in, in our yeah. city. Um, um, it, was, it, was my, it was my faith that, that uh, I stepped out and ran f- for office, and I think it was my faith that helped me then uh, develop, a, um, if you will, a political agenda that mm-hmm. included not only creating what I think arguably today is one of the uh, absolutely coolest cities in America, uh, in Grand Rapids. Go Grand Rapids. Go Grand Rapids. Um, but, but also um, you know, creating a city that's, that's measurably better for people who um, once found themselves entirely marginalized. So I think these days when we think about Christians and politics and influencing it, easily go to certain hot button issues. And, and another dimension of that conversation is talking about the common good or maybe what MLK called the beloved community. How did you handle as mayor uh, Christians of different stripes who come at issues and define them differently. How did your political agenda, shaped as a public theologian, as a, as a Christian in elected office, how did you deal with this kind of diversity of thought uh, across the, how did Christians deal with you and how did you respond yeah. to them yeah. <laughs> as you moving towards right. shaping public policy? Let me try to answer the question with, uh, with an, an illustration of what was a very controversial issue. And, and I think you know, still still remains today uh, a, a controversy, and that is um, LGBTQ rights, uh, the, 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 the human rights of people whose sexual orientation is other than um, uh, heterosexual. Mm-hmm. Um, in 1992, when I was elected to the city commission um, as a commissioner, I had um, already in my mind that we should be one of the leading cities in, in the nation in adopting an ordinance or amending our civil rights ordinances to include sexual orientation, uh, mm-hmm. along with you know, race and gender and disability and ethnicity and all of the others that we should add sexual orientation. Um, in 1992, we, we tried that. I, I brought forward a proposal. Uh, um, it, 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 it failed on a, on a vote of uh, three to four. Um, and two years later, with a change in one of the uh, city commissioners who had voted uh, no, uh, it ended up passing on a, on a four to three vote. So, so it, 
It lost narrowly and it passed narrowly. Um, there were extensive public um, hearings on, on, on that issue. And, and in fact, I remember one that we had to move out of the city commission chambers across the street into the convention center to find a space large mm -hmm. enough to contain the audience mm -hmm. who for hours lined up either in favor or opposed. And in the lines of those who were opposed and those who were in favor were Christian pastors and, and Christian people that I knew to be people of faith. Okay. And, and so on this you know, most divisive of issue, uh, it was uh, the, the, the faith community was, was divided and felt strongly uh, about uh, their position on, on either side of that issue. Mm -hmm. um, what I could do, uh, and, and, of, and of course as the only minister on the Grand Rapids City Commission at that time and the one who had brought this proposal forward, um, I was um, um, you know, much demeaned by, by those on, on one side sure. and, uh, and lionized by those on the other side. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, it seemed like there were more on the one side than the other. And, and it was uh, so, but for hours, we, would, we had public uh, comment on that, on that issue. I, I believe that when the day is done on an issue as difficult and divisive as that one, the Christian in public office who is going to have to cast a vote one way or the other has to do several things. First, listen. Listen to the, to the people on both sides of the issue and under, try to understand the issue from both perspectives. Secondly, uh, seek, seek the, the guidance of, of, of our sacred texts uh, of, of, of Holy Scripture. And so uh, throughout that time and, and for um, most of my adult life, including up to this morning, um, I spend time with Scripture every, every morning. And, and then there's the, the in, there's the life of the community. So you're, you're, you're turning to a faith community, your church, and trying to get wisdom from them and making yourself vulnerable enough to listen to that voice. And then you go inside and try to listen to the voice of God um, in, your, in your life of prayer and meditation. You try to ascertain God's will in this difficult decision, whatever it might be. Um, because you know you're going to have to cast a vote. And then you, then you cast your vote. And as, a, uh, as an Anglican theologian uh, who wrote on this subject uh, 30 years ago uh, once said, uh, um, uh, you, always, you always cast that vote in a spirit of contrition because mm -hmm. maybe you're wrong. Uh, you've listened, you've tried to understand God's will, you've cast your vote, maybe you're wrong. Mm -hmm. What about, I mean, I think a lot of folks who might listen to this are pastors and they have political opinions often that they aren't free to express or don't feel free to express. Express They don't want to be too political in their sermon making and in their pastoring. But yet we're, you know, we're called to impact public life, at least as Reformed Christians. We, we're not distant from the world. We're in the midst of it trying to be salt and light. What advice would you have, given your experience, about how pastors and churches, um, lay folks, lay leaders, how, how should they try to influence public life, whether it's in Grand Rapids or Holland or across the world? You know? Let me start with pastors and acknowledge that my, um, my experience is, is, uh, is, is limited, that I've not served a, a congregation, a parish, as mm -hmm. a pastor. Um, but, I, but I believe that politics, narrowly defined, has no place in the pulpit. That said, um, to, to, to not preach a prophetic gospel um, is, to, is to diminish and, 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 and defang, if you will, the power of, mm. of the gospel. Mm. Mm. So I think the, 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 the pastor in, in, in her or his uh, preaching has to walk that really, really difficult line between um, um, not being political but being prophetic. 
Um, and, and being prophetic means you're going to make that, that, that some people in the congregation are going to go away upset and angry. And, and, mm -hmm. and so you have to start with by building a trust relationship, mm -hmm. I suppose, before you can get there. Mm -hmm. I remember a pastor in a Presbyterian church where we um, uh, were members for many years who, um, brand new pastor, came in and, and immediately started uh, a, a prophetic and, and, and demanding um, 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 message from the gospel and, and, and he lasted just one month more than one year, mm. 13 months. Um, so uh, I think you got to be careful. You got to build the trust, but, but, but we can't shy away from the, the power of, of uh, the social gospels uh, that, are, that are there. They're mm. absolutely there. Mm. Um, then, then for, for lay people, uh, I believe we have responsibility to, uh, uh, to take our Christian faith and, and what we've learned from our faith and, and put it into practice in the, uh, in the public square. Um, that means, that means we, 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 we lobby our, our city council members and our state legislators and our, and our U.S. Congress uh, people. Uh, it, it also means we... we um, we, we work through non-church organizations. If, it's, if environmentalism is your, is your passion, then there are environmental organizations to work with and bring your faith uh, perspective in, into, that, into that work. Um, and, and then maybe ultimately even run for local office uh, yourself. That, uh, I, I think, is, is something that, uh, that any Christian with that sense of calling ought to seriously consider. Well, thanks, George. We could talk about lots of other things, um, but I think our time's up. We could. So, um, Glenn, appreciate it. It's been great, brother, to be with you. Amen.